What's up, I'm Seth with Best I Can Do Barbecue. Today, I'm gonna try not to screw up beer. <laughs> I got uh, going on here today guys I think in my I never have done a trailer for my channel but uh, maybe I should have but if you look in my bio my about on my channel it says stuff about homebrew this is the first homebrew I'm gonna record uh, homebrew days are kind of busy uh, and so it's hard to get the time in to record when you're especially when you're brewing by yourself so I got to figure out a way to set everything up to watch the mashing process and all that but so I have gone strictly for a long time to making my own recipes, creating my own recipes, creating my own grain bill, hop additions, all that. Uh, but I've been home brewing now for a couple of years and uh, the only brew that I've ever done that didn't turn out was a Smashing Pumpkin Ale extract kit from Northern Brewer. And it was all my fault. Northern Brewer, Brewer is a great company. Love those guys. Uh, but it was my fault. So today I am recreating a beer that I cooked a couple of years ago uh, that didn't turn out I had to pour out 50 something bottles of beer. So today we're making the Northern Brewer Smashing Pumpkin Ale. And uh, so that's what we're doing today. So hopefully this video is good. All right, so my sparge water is up to temp. Uh, I'm, I'm mashing in at around 150 degrees. Mashing in is when you mix the grains into your water to kind of get those enzymes out of your grain to make your malt to turn into wort to turn into beer. Uh, and so that's what we're doing right now. I've got my water up to temp and I like to transfer my water over uh, There was a while we were dumping it. I don't have a pump So I'm just using a racking cane to rack the hot water from here to there it Takes a couple of minutes. My water was like 170. So I think I'm really good uh, What we got now I've got a can of pure pumpkin puree now some beer purists would say You know, you shouldn't be Using cans of stuff. You should be using actual pumpkin What I've read recently and learned so last time I did this, I used real pumpkin. Now that didn't make, that's not why my beer didn't turn out. My beer didn't turn out because I killed my yeast trying to make a yeast starter that I had never done before. But ultimately, um, uh, they say that the, the flavor that when you think of pumpkin flavor, what you're really thinking of is pumpkin spice. And this beer kit does come with a, some pumpkin spice. We're gonna add this in our mash to give it extra pumpkin flavor. And I forgot to bring a spoon outside. I'm too lazy to go back in the house and get one. We'll go ahead and put two cans in there because that didn't turn out too much. You right. can get off my pocket knife. You may be thinking, like, that's not a typical looking muslin bag or even the kind of crap that you can with. And you're right. I didn't have one. And where I live, there's no local homebrew store. And I live about 20 minutes from town and I want to get done cooking beer. So I went to the store. I just used an old white beater tank top. An A shirt for you non country folk. I'm going to mash in. We're going to dump all of our grains in there first. Freeman's going to stir. And I'm going to start mixing in some rice hulls with this. They add no flavor, but they will help us keep from getting stuck mash. And stuck mash is when you get ready to drain your beer out of this, your wort out of your mash tun, it won't come. Now, I'm going to add our pumpkin. Now, like I wasn't thinking earlier, I said that we need to put this in a bag and have a bag, but I'm thinking from the realm of extract brew, which I did last time. We're not doing an extract brew. We're doing an all grain brew, so we're going to have the mash tun. So, I'm going to try to do this without losing a finger, because my friend is not the sharpest thing it ever was. I say that you don't cut this out. Shake it and we'll bring our camera in. Look, all right, you can see what we've got here. We've got it all mashed in. Give it a little stir there for him. Bring some grains to the top. And I threw it in my bag. I'm gonna need that. All right, so now we're gonna check temp, put the lid on it, and wait an hour. What's known as a stuck mash. Tried to boil off it a little bit, nothing came out. We got maybe a half a cup. Then we've got our mash tun here with all of our wort in it. And uh, we got our hot liquor tank ready to go ready to drain water on, but we've got no flow. So now we're gonna do everything we can to undo this. There's really no good way to unstick a mash. 
Lots of professional birds would just throw this shit away. But I can promise you right now, I'll never do <laughs> smashing pumpkin ale yeah, again. what we've done here. So we used a scoop. This scoop here, we used for frying stuff, and scooped some of our wort out to two separate brew buckets. All right, we, we scooped some of our grains out of there and strained them, and then we kept on continually added. Uh, we sparged them, just kind of doing this small little batch sparge just through that. And that's why I feel like we've got the good out of all that. Now we've got our mash tun dripping, I mean our hot liquor tank dripping, doing a sparge. And it's through two uh, strainers. And uh, we're just going to try to get as much uh, good out of this as we can. Try to get our, I'd like to get seven gallons, but at this point, beggars can't be choosers with stuck sparges. Uh, stuck mash, man. As you can see, we're still we're still gonna be able to get our uh, our spars through. I'd say about half our grains, and I did spars those other grains once. So we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, so uh, we got our our ward up to a boil. Uh, this is a pretty simple recipe from Northern Brewer. All it takes is one ounce of cluster at 60 minutes. I drop my hops in. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that stuff up real good. I didn't turn the fire off. I just turned it down. Uh, we don't want to scorch it. We also don't want it to boil over. So what I've done now is I've got, uh, I put my wart chiller in there. I didn't record that, but I've got a copper wart chiller. Um, what it, how it works is, is I'll, uh, I'll hook my water hose up to it. The water will circulate through that copper chiller and it should absorb the heat into that cool water and it dumps it out uh, on the ground over here. Um, I went ahead and put it in there about 20 minutes before my boil is over with so that uh, I'm sure to uh, sterilize it. Because once I shut this the heat off and it quits boiling, then you're worried about spoilage. I only got a couple more steps here before I'm done. I'm going to add the pumpkin spice. I'm going to add a little bit of Irish moss. Irish moss is supposed to help it clear up when you keg it or bottle it or whatever. And uh, then we've got to chill it and put it in our fermenter and put the yeast in there and we're done. So brew day is almost over. Started cooking beer at 10 o'clock and it's now 2.30. No, no, I take it back. Started cooking beer at maybe 11 o'clock and it's now 2.30. So brew day is an all day event. So you better pack your lunch. I got my lunch packed up, my boots tied tight. I hope I don't get in a fight. So I totally forgot to put in my pumpkin spice. I'm gonna add it here. Yeah. All right, so real quick, uh, cause I think the guys delivered my firewood are coming. Uh, but what we're doing now is we are racking the beer from my kettle to my fermenter and I'm just using a plastic bucket, a brew bucket for a, a fermenter. Uh, before that we use star sand to sterilize all of our stuff. We always, once your beer's done boiling, everything's got to be uh, sterilized because you don't want any bugs in there. And I also took my mash paddle and I stirred it up really good in a whirlpool, it's like spinning fashion, hoping all that crap, all that extra grains and stuff I had left over ends up in the middle. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna try to do when we finish this up is I'm not gonna get, you know, a lot of times I'll try to get every amount of wort out of this kettle I can, and I'm not gonna do that today because there's a lot of trash in this. Uh, so, and we may end up doing a secondary, but um, after this, we'll go ahead and, and sprinkle our pitch our yeast, and then I'll put this dude up for about 10 days. Uh, so I'll see you in a few minutes when we pitch yeast. All right, let me get my yeast. All right, so everything has been sterilized. We're using safe ale, USO5, just a dry ale yeast. No, pitch my yeast. It's one of these great things about using these brew buckets, man. I have glass fermenters too. And with the glass fermenters, you pour the yeast down the little tube and it sticks all over the tube, but it doesn't all get in there. With these buckets, you can just do that business right there. The only thing I don't like about a bucket is you can't look in there and see what's happening. I'm gonna flick it like a cigarette till I think I'm good. I All right, it. put my air breather on. So now I've got my little bubbler on here. Just twist that dude in there. All right, now we're done. Tomorrow I'll come back and look at it. I should see some bubbles coming out of this. And in say eight days, I'll come back seven days. I'll transfer it from one bucket to a clean bucket. Try to get some of that seven out of there. Then after that, I'll wait three or four days. I will keg it. It'll sit in my keg for a week while it carbonates and then we'll drink it. So three weeks from now, Three, week, three weeks from now, 
three hours later. Three hours later. We will have a tasting video that'll be short and sweet. Spent grains. When we're done, go the goats. Go Mango and Mika there getting some, some grainage. It's been raining all day. It's a mess out here.